Hello and welcome to The Eye, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. After the General Secretary of the NSCNIM, T.H. Muiva, was admitted at the CIHSR in Limapur on July 24th, doctors have informed that his condition is stable and will be discharged soon. Senior government officials from across the world, including individuals in high national security positions, were targeted by governments using the NSO group spyware, Pegasus, says WhatsApp CEO. At least nine tourists were killed and three injured after boulders rolled downhill in Kinnor district following a landslide. Now for the news in details. The General Secretary of the Armed Group, NSCNIM, T.H. Muiva, was admitted to the Christian Institute of Health Sciences and Research on the night of July 24th after he complained of difficulty in breathing. The director of the hospital, Dr. Sedevi Angami, told Hornbill TV that Muiva's oxygen saturation was stable, but he had tested positive for COVID-19. During a press conference at the CIHSR on July 25th, Officials of the hospital said Muiva's condition today is stable. When queried when the NSCN leader would be discharged, the hospital said they are monitoring his condition but that his case is mild. He might be discharged soon. The government of Nagaland, Dimapur Health Authorities and the personnel of the hospital are working for a speedy recovery, the hospital informed. Security at the hospital is tight with personnel from the Nagaland police besides cadres of the NSCN keeping vigil in the establishment's premises. Former interim body member and Nagaland Minister T. K. Khan passed away in the early morning of July 25th at his residence in Woka town at the age of 88 years. Leaders and community elders including ruling legislators Matang Yantan, Monlo Mokikon and Achumbe Mokikon, spokesperson of the Naga People's Front, paid tributes to the departed leader. Tsenla Mokikon also known as T. Kikon from Yimpang village, who was born on the 25th of May, 1933. He received his primary education in his village, then at private high school Woka, and graduated in arts from St. Anthony's College in Shillong in 1960. When Kikon returned from college, he was selected as one of the members representing the Lok Lotha tribe to the Nagaland interim body in 1960. Kikon's political career spanned over 48 years, during which he served as a minister twice in the state of Nagaland and contributed immense, immensely to the people of Nagaland. He retired from active politics in 2008. Many witnessed him as a man who feared God and earnestly read the Bible. Kikon is survived by his wife of 58 years, Athelo, and two sons and five daughters and 11 grandchildren. Condolence, condolence messages from Nagaland Chief Minister Nifu Rio and Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party President Ching Wang Konyak were delivered at the funeral service. The Zunoboto Town Sumi Baptist Church SBAK Aizoto organized a felicitation program for the newly installed office bearers of Sumi Ho Ho on July 25th at its church. Let's have a look at the details. Sumihoho Niketo Jimomi during his speech said that ever since the inception of Sumihoho, he had never known the Sumihoho team being facilitated in the church and as such lauded the church leaders for the initiative. He asserted that along with many other talks and actions, he informed the main objective of their team was to get back to the root and work for unifying the slowly disintegrating community and by doing so, Sumi can strongly stand for Nagas and can strongly stand for Christ. He informed that there are over 3 lakh Sumi population and if all Sumi frontal organization supports them, they can easily bring together all the sections of Sumi and get it unified. He stated that the team wouldn't work for prestige but would work for the betterment of the community and no matter what plans they have, without God's wisdom and charisma, it would be impossible and as such he requested the church members to continuously pray for them. Dr. Vihoto Asumi, General Secretary Sumi Ho Ho, while speaking in the program, recalled an occasion where Dr. H. A. Rotoka question how can we even ask God for long life without working for the benefit of the society and for the well-being of the coming generation as such he said that 
They will only work for the well-being of the society and not for their own interests. He lamented that there are many people who want to be a leader, many people who want to be an officer, and many who want to be educated but respect none of them and added, with that attitude they can never achieve their dreams. He stated that every part of the body was equally important, likewise every civil bodies are equally important and has their own role to play and added that the church can play a very important role in building a society which among was to encourage clean election. Dr. Vyoto further said that when the frontliner sees a thorn and doesn't inform the person following, the frontliners are to be blamed when his followers are hurt with it. Likewise, he added that there are lots of thorns in the society and together they will work to remove all those thorns they see and create better place for the coming generation. Manipur Education Minister Soro Kaibam Rajan Singh has declared the Council of Higher Secondary Education Manipur COHSEM examination results on Saturday. Results, Rajain Singh informed that the total number of candidates whose assessment report has been received from different private and government higher secondary schools and 12 class opening colleges by the council is 31,136. Out of this, the result of 31,074 candidates has been declared while 62 candidates' result has been withheld. There are 59 candidates waiting for conducive atmosphere for the subject improvement examinations. The applications of 972 students are being awaited to be submitted to the council. These students can submit their applications till the 31st of July 2021, according to the council's notification. According to this year's results, 16,395 students are declared passed in the first division, 13,100 students in the second division, 1,557 students in the third division, and 22 students in the simple pass category. In terms of district-wise pass percentage of students, Bishnupur, Kamjong, Perzol, Ukrul and Chandel district recorded 100%. Imphal West district has the highest number of students registering at 11,082 candidates to appear for this year, while Perzol district has the lowest by registering just four students for the exams. Overall pass percentage including arts, science and commerce stream is 99.80%. A total of 9,061 students from the arts, 21,387 from science, and 747 from the commerce stream, totaling 31,195 students were enrolled this year. Declaring the results in the conference hall of the Council of Higher Secondary Education, Manipur, Rajin Singh said that the declaration of the COH SEM exam 2021 in time of pandemic was a good sign for the education sector of the state. New Delhi MP John Britas has moved the Supreme Court seeking, seeking a court-monitored probe into reports of alleged snooping of activists, politicians, journalists and constitutional functionaries using Israeli spyware Pegasus. A massive political row has erupted after media reports claim that Pegasus spyware was used to conduct surveillance on about 300 Indians including ministers, political leaders, government officials and journalists. According to news agency PTI, Britas, who has filed a public interest litigation in Supreme Court, said that recent allegations of snooping have caused concern among a large section of people in India and that snooping would have a chilling effect on free speech and expression. He has sought a court-monitored investigation into allegations of snooping using Pegasus spyware. In a statement on Sunday, Britas, who is a CPIM member, said that despite the very serious nature, the central government has not cared to investigate into the allegations involved in the issue but made only a hopeful hope that the time-tested processes in our country are well established to ensure that unauthorized surveillance does not occur. Therefore, he said the queries were raised in the Indian parliament with respect to this leakage. But the government has neither denied nor admitted the snooping by the spyware, he said. Anti-lockdown protesters numbering in thousands took to the street streets in Australia's big cities defying stay-at-home orders and clashing with the police. In Sydney, protesters were seen uprooting plants and picking bottles from the sidewalks and hurling them at the police, reported Bloomberg. David Elliott, Police and Emergency Services Minister for New South Wales, criticised the protesters, telling reporters that these are the sort of people who are going to prolong this lockdown. About 50 people have been arrested so far in Sydney. Rallies also took place in other cities like Melbourne. The actual number of protesters is not yet known, but Elliot indicated around 3,500 people participated in the mass protests. 
The protest organizers had dubbed the protest a freedom rally and publicized it on social media pages associated with vaccine disinformation and conspiracy theories, reported AFP. Resentment has been growing amongst the masses over the Scott Morrison government's handling of the pandemic. Most of the protesters were seen walking maskless and were carrying signboards with slogans like Wake Up Australia and Drain the Swamp. Millions of Australians have been put under lockdown as a combination of the Delta variant and slow vaccine rollouts have been leading to a rise in the number of cases. Australia has administered enough doses for just 21% of its population, according to Bloomberg Vaccine Tracker. Senior government officials from across the world, including individuals in high national security positions who are allies of the U.S., were targeted by governments using the NSO group spyware in a 2019 attack against 1,400 WhatsApp users, according to CEO WhatsApp, The Guardian reported. WhatsApp CEO Will Katkar disclosed the new details about individuals who were targeted in the snoop attack. His statement comes at a time the investigation by media groups revealed that contacts of a large number of politicians and activists across the globe were in the target list of the Pegasus software that is sold to vetted governments by Israel's NSO group. Kathcart said that he saw parallels between the attack against WhatsApp users in 2019, which is now the subject of a lawsuit brought by WhatsApp against NSO and reports about a massive data leak which are at the center of the Pegasus project. The reporting matches what we saw in the attack we defeated two years ago, Kathcart said in an interview with The Guardian. In addition to the senior government officials, WhatsApp found that journalists and human rights activists were targeted in the 2019 attack against its users. Many of the targets in the WhatsApp case, he said, had no business being under surveillance in any way, shape or form, the report said. This should be a wake-up call for security on the internet, he said. Mobile phones are either safe for everyone or they are not safe for everyone, he said. At least nine tourists were killed and three injured after boulders rolled downhill in Kinnor district following a landslide resulting in a bridge collapse. Rescue operations are underway. The incident was caught on camera where large chunks of rocks could be seen rolling down into the valley below. Teams of ITBP have been pressed into service to conduct the relief and rescue operations. Nine persons died, three injured after boulders rolled downhill due to landslide in Kinnor district. But Seri Bridge was collapsed in the incident. Rescue team present at the spot, Sajuram Rana, superintendent of police, Kinnor district, said. According to reports, heavy boulders fell on a tempo traveller carrying 11 people, of which 9 were killed. Some vehicles were also damaged in the incident. The MET centre in Shimla recently issued a warning for landslides in Himachal Pradesh due to heavy rainfall predicted in the next few days. Latest weather conditions and interpretations of different global and regional models indicate that rainfall activity is very likely to increase around Saturday for the next 3-4 days with moderate to heavy rainfall in lower and middle hills of Himachal Pradesh, the meteorological department stated. A longer gap between first and second doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine generates strong antibody and T-cell immune responses UK researchers have found. A study led by the University of Oxford in collaboration with the universities of Birmingham, Newcastle, Liverpool, Sheffield and supported by the UK Coronavirus Immunology Consortium is one of the most comprehensive studies into the immune response generated by the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to date. The protective immunity from T-cells to COVID-19 in health workers study found that T-cell levels are well maintained and antibody levels are higher following a longer interval between the first and second dose of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, despite a significant drop in antibody levels between doses. The studies worldwide are showing that both the short and long dosing schedules lead to strong real-world protection against COVID-19, emphasizing the importance of having a second dose of the vaccine. The study shows the value of studying both antibody and T-cell responses following SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, particularly to understand the multiple mechanisms of protection there may be against new variants of concern, said Dr. Tushan De Silva, study author and senior clinical lecturer in infectious diseases at the University of Sheffield.
In other news, four employees of businessman and actor Shilpa Shetty's husband Raj Kundra have turned witnesses against him in the pornography racket case in four Mumbai police sources on Sunday. Mumbai police sources inform ANI that four of Raj Kundra's employees have turned witnesses in the pornography racket case. They further added that these employees have furnished the entire information about the working of the racket to the property cell of the Mumbai crime branch, increasing trouble for Kundra. He was arrested by the Mumbai police late on July 19 along with 11 other people on charges related to the alleged creation of pornographic films and will remain in the custody of the Mumbai crime branch till July 27th. The property cell of the Mumbai crime branch on Sunday summoned television actor and model Gehana Vasisht and two other people for questioning in connection with a pornography case. Meanwhile, investigating the porn film case, Mumbai police crime branch has found a hidden cupboard in Kundra's Vian and JL stream office in Mumbai's Andheri during searches. As per sources, Kundra will soon face Money Laundering and Foreign Exchange Management Act cases against him as Enforcement Directorate is likely to register cases under these acts against him. Currently, the case involves alleged creation of pornographic films and publishing them through some apps. Kundra has been named as the key conspirator by the Mumbai police, which has slapped charges against him under sections 420, 34, 292 and 293 related to obscene and indecent advertisements and displays of the Indian Penal Code besides relevant sections of the IT Act and the indecent representation of women. The Apex Child Rights Body National Commission for Protection of Child Rights or the NCPCR in a study revealed that 59.2 percent of children use their smartphones for instant messaging applications and only 10.1 percent of children like to use smartphones for online learning and education. About 59.2 percent children use their smartphones and internet devices for chatting like WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, the study stated. While only 10.1% of children like to use smartphones for online learning and education, the study read. Title as the effects, physical, behavioral and psychosocial of using mobile phones and other devices with internet accessibility by children, the study says that 30.2% of children of all age groups have their own smartphones. The report states that it is also interesting to know that 30.2% of the children of all age groups, which is 8 to 18 years, already possess their own smartphones and use the same for all purposes. Surprisingly, 37.8% of 10-year-olds have a Facebook account and 24.3% of the same age group has an Instagram account. The trend line of the percentage of children using their own smartphones has shown a steep rise from the age of 13 years onwards. However, that of children using laptops, tablets to access the internet is evidently stable across all ages. This can lead to the deduction that parents or guardians are more willing to provide smartphones to the children from the ages of 12 to 13 years onwards as against a laptop or tablet, the study notes. About 150 National Disaster Response Force, the NDRF teams, have been engaged in relief and rescue operations in floods and landslides affected areas across India as heavy downpour has disrupted normal lives in several states. 34 teams have been deployed in Maharashtra alone. Other than Maharashtra, 8 NDRF teams have been deployed in Telangana while 7 teams are working in Karnataka. Speaking to ANI, NDRF Director General SN Pradhan said that more than 100 people have died in Maharashtra alone due to landslides. The authorities will have to continue the rescue operations as incessant rains continue to create situations of flood and landslides, the NDRF Director General said. 34 teams of NDRF are working in Maharashtra, 7 teams are working in Karnataka and 8 teams are working in Telangana, it was informed. Thousands of people have been rescued and taken to a safe place, Pradhan said. Operation is going on but the situation is difficult because it is raining continuously and the havoc of rain continues, Pradhan said. Due to this, NDRF teams are facing problems in providing relief and rescue, he said. The present situation is that we will have to work continuously for some days in Maharashtra where there have been more than 100 deaths due to landslides, Pradhan added. NDRF is trained 
and the relief and rescue operations will continue till the situation is completely controlled, Pradhan added. That's all for the eye. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.